A very good day to all of you listeners out there and welcome to episode 7 of this season. And we have Lyra here. Yes, we're coming to an end. Of this uh, season 5. And now I just want to start off by referencing to the last episode because we talk about China, we talk about the Chinese media. And yeah, we come to the conclusion, yes, people need to come to, to a place where they can decide. But how can people decide if there is no fairness in terms of the right platform, the right place. So today we want to talk a little bit about big tech, censorship. And I think we want to begin by just watching this video first. All right. A part of this issue and other issues with COVID, um, you know, goes back to an attempt to enforce one acceptable narrative on, on all these issues. And, you know, you saw it with uh, the uh, censorship of, of Dr. Bhattacharya uh, with Twitter. You also saw it with Dr. Fauci and some of these people saying that they needed to go after these people who wrote the Great Barrington Declaration. They wanted to not contest the ideas in that. They basically wanted to, to smear them uh, because they didn't want to have any criticism uh, of their lockdown policies. And so... Part of the reason I think it's been a bad response is because from the very beginning, you had a lot of arrogance that it's our way or the highway and anyone that offers any type of a dissenting opinion. And they were censoring from day one people that would write anti-lockdown uh, things in March of 2020, April 2020. Some of those would get taken down off some of these big tech platforms. And so we saw that over and over again. And I think that uh, ultimately, uh, you know, your policies or your positions or your analysis of this medical science should stand on its own. And if, it, if it's not able to accept criticism, if you can't defend the policy against, against valid criticism, uh, then maybe you need to be looking in the mirror. But that's not what these elites wanted to do. They wanted to just cocoon themselves from any criticism and to try to denigrate anybody uh, that had a different way of thinking. So I think with the Twitter, what Elon Musk is doing, I think there's going to be a lot more that comes out with that. Uh, and I think that that's very important. But I think it's also important to say, you know, Twitter is not even close uh, to most of the censorship, what was going on. They're a much smaller company than like a Google or YouTube or some of these others. And I guarantee you everything that was going on in Twitter is going on in these others, if not even more so. And we got a sense of that when they went after us uh, for, for having the um, opposing the masks, having the experts oppose the masks for these young kids. So that's uh, Governor Ron DeSantis at COVID-19 mRNA Vaccine Accountability Roundtable just three or four days ago. So it's very interesting. I mean, there are so many things that he mentioned, but I think broadly we want to break into two issues here today. One, of course, is the censorship, deliberate censorship of big tech, which they deny many, many times. But as Governor DeSantis alluded, the Twitter file yep. <laughs> released by Twitter's new owner, the sort of... And, 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 but before we even get into that, have you been reading the mainstream media? Seems like very little reporting of the Twitter file. Yeah, I mean, you could just hardly see anything about this whole Twitter explosion, mm -hmm. if you could call it. I mean, because there has even been talks where Apple is just wanting to take down Twitter from mm -hmm. the platform. So yep. there's a lot of deplatforming sort of talks that are going around with the mainstream, but not so much on the details and particulars mm. that was being released in regards to this Twitter files. And of course, we have some one or two famous people say, I'm leaving Twitter because it's censoring. But it's like, it, it, it's the other way around. It, it, it's like, if we look at what has been released, by the way, the Twitter files are widely available. And Elon Musk sort of released to mainstream media, you know, people like Matt Taibbi, people like Glenn Gre Greenwald, you know, th these are people you consider establishment in the media, but of course, now that they are against censorship, I'm not sure what is their classification. Maybe they'll be moved <laughs> into the dissenting party. So, so that's yeah. one part we want to mention. Then, of course, the other part is how this impact COVID. And I think that will be the, the second part. Now, let's talk about BitTap first. And now, now, Lyra, you're going to talk about Twitter file. But before that, let me just set the scene for you. 2016, after Donald Trump won the election, 
Google had an interior, in, internal meeting. Yep. And they are like, and, and in fact, it was later on, the whole video was kind of released, you know, because they were just there. They look so moody. They look so unhappy. And, and they just behave like spoiled child that someone had damaged their, you know, their thing or whatever. And they were just discussing what has happened and things like that. But the conclusion end of 2016 was that we have to stop this from happening. We have to prevent this from happening again. Prevent what? Basically, they, they say we had to prevent the candidate we do not like from winning again. In this case, Donald Trump. Not through persuasion, not through political process, but through censorship, through manipulation of data. So they went into this overdrive the next few years. They, they started preparing for 2020. And, and just give you some of the example. So when, when you do a Google search, you know, nowadays, you know, uh, there's a search suge suggestion. You type, uh, what is nice in Taman Desa? And then, you know, they will just come up with all these things. And, and, and then they will say, for example, you, you type a particular issue, Hunter Biden laptop, and it, it will tell you, you know, if Google doesn't want you to know, it, it won't even show yep. or it will lead you somewhere else. Now, why this is important? Because in any election, especially modern election, we are talking about margin. We are talking about you just need to persuade the 20%, the 30%, the 40% undecided. And that's why even the recent Malaysian, Malaysia GE, you know, Twitter has so much, not Twitter, TikTok has so much power because you have so many undecided people. They are just waiting out there to be tapped, uh, you know, to be persuaded into a certain thinking. So, so that's the thing. Then, of course, I can think of another example. You know, we think about the recently concluded midterm in America. Hmm. And one of the way the big tech, the media, the mainstream media, they manipulated the result will be... Now, and I know if you are from Malaysia, you listen to this, you'll be so shocked to hear the election process. Now, the reason is because in America, the elections process are decided by the states. So can you imagine Slango had their own rules, Sarawak had their own rules, and basically every state have their own rule. And it's, it's strange, but true, they don't necessarily need to count all the vote because their data trending is so good and they'll be like, oh, based on the data, X, Y, Z is likely to win. So at some point, usually the media will call the result. So how do they do the manipulation in 2022? will be to call out the election very, very early on after 20% yep. of vote. Can you imagine 20% counted and then you say, oh, XYZ has won. And it kind of reminds me of election day, right, in Malaysia. I think 8 or 9 p.m. Suddenly someone said, oh, Zahid had lost. You know, those kind of things. And it kind of will have impact because people start to, to think about the, the, the wave, uh, what's happening. So, so that's one of the examples. So we're just laying all this out so that you, you understand what we're talking about. But Lyra, I think you have gone through uh, some of the things that has been released, right? The, the so-called Twitter file released by Elon Musk. Maybe you'd like to just go through very quickly with us and you know discuss why this is so impactful going forward. Yeah, right. I mean, I just want to like just set the scene again a little mm -hmm. bit more because following what you said about the... Google internal meeting. Yep. I mean, it was, I think a lot of people were not aware that it was actually an hour long sort of meeting. <laughs> and then the conclusion was that the X by Alphabet's president, that he basically just said he himself being that immigrant and also a refugee, he certainly find the selection deeply offensive. It's like you are imposing your idea of mm. offensive to all the rest of the people. I mean, if you're the president and then you have a whole lot of employees, what are you going to say to your your president, you know? Yeah. So it's it's very uh, overbearing in that sense. Mm -hmm. But, and he also said this, uh, that he says it's a very stressful time and it conflicts with many of our values. Yeah. But you are that platform that basically allows people to have that sort of public conversation. Mm -hmm. We talk about First Amendment and yet you have this sort of values and all these are that underlying values that are governing the the whole setup of your company. So, I mean, obviously there are certain things that are going to just be shadow banned and that's where we come into this Twitter file. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, if that's the scene that is being set by one of the largest companies in the world, Google, and then you also have Twitter. Also, 
in the same gang altogether, like Big Tech. Yep. So basically, all these group of people are just saying that we will just allow you to see what we want you to see. And I mean, just going back to like Twitter, one of the very, very first thing that has been banned and that people can't really even talk about this whole thing is Hunter Biden mm -hmm, laptop. Mm -hmm, yep. I mean, and there are a lot of reports that say if they had knew, known that there is this sort of collusion that is coming and happening in the background, they wouldn't have even voted mm. Biden in the first place. And a lot of people are having that voter's remorse. Yeah, the data did show that because we're talking about margin, you know, it's very, very close that if that news has been promoted by the media, there will be a great shift because how can we put in a commander-in-chief with family members who are so compromised by corruption, compromised by China, for example. Yep. And uh, you remember one of the main publications that kind of reported New York Post? Yep. Now, New York Post it is sort of pseudo-conservative, I'll say. They are, they are not even supporter of Donald Trump that much. But they were removed from Twitter for a long time and no explanation was given. And all oh, the mainstream media just kind of dumbed down and said, what, what laptop, what laptop? And, and now the authority are saying, oh, we have the laptop. And you know, that, that's why it is becoming more and more ridiculous, but we get into that. So, so maybe you want to, to go into the Twitter file now? Yeah, of course. And then, so the first part was the, basically that Hunter Biden laptop where mm -hmm. you basically just see see that um, FBI is just colluding and then they say, oh no, this whole thing is just Russian misinformation yep. and stuff like that. And then you also have like a, basically a part of people group the secret blacklist mm -hmm. where they just basically just say, no, any dissenting voice against Biden, I mean, you're not going to observe all this thing in Twitter. So if imagine if you're like voting in the process of like just because in the US, there is a lot of polling, mm -hmm. basically just determine the popularity of the president. Yep. That, that actually has a huge deciding factor on the next mm. election. That's so right. that sort of thing is just basically, you, you can't really talk about all this thing because anything that is disfavoring to them, you can't talk about this. And that's the thing about Democrats. It's not that we are against Democrats. It's just that <laughs> when there are certain things that are against their values, it's like you're saying that, oh, no, we should have that sort of square discussion, yep. fair discussion, but it's only as far as it convenience them. Mm. Let's remember, in this show, we always talk about how the modern day Democrats, the modern day liberal, they, they have more similarity with communist CCP. Right. Because it's like, we, you, can, we can, you can discuss as long as it is agreeable. So Jack Dorsey went to Congress and said, we do not censor. Yeah. And, and now he came out and said, now, now did you hear what he said? He, he blamed the shareholder, you know. Uh, he, I think, I can't remember who is a shareholder. He's a big shareholder. And he said, oh, because the, the, the shareholder is uh, anti-Donald Trump and things like that. So just coming out with all kind of nonsense. But he, he basically told a, a big lie and he has been exposed by his successor, Elon Musk. Yeah, I mean, but... <laughs> It's ridiculous. I mean, when you think about it, because he's also been part of the, the trust and security team. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have this whole group of people who are the lower level internal security. Basically, they just vet through the tweets and decide that if this are all offensive or not, and if it contradicts with the value. You, you have this group of people that say basically the things that Trump did, there was no, there was no nothing that kind of like caused the Capitol riot. Mm -hmm. But then you have this whole lot of information that is being reported to the security and trust him. And they say, no, 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 no. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, what scientific data are you basing on? Because if you say you're, you're hiring this group of people to just vet through the whole thing. And then when the report comes out to be not favoring you or what you perceive to be, like basically what Google, um, the Alphabet president say it, it contradicts with our values, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And then you suddenly have that, that part where you basically see that Twitter execs just move to the platform President Trump. Yeah, and it, it seems like they want to justify that, look, we have algorithms, we have processors, but it looks like it's just some sort of committee. You know? It kind of reminds me of how the communists used to have committee, right? When yeah. you come to a committee, it's like the verdict has already been decided. They just kind of just reminds me of how 
how it works in Malaysia, even the judiciary, you know, for the longest time when the judiciary was under siege. And, and that's why when, when the, the Lingam video came out, basically he was saying, look, you know, <laughs> we, we, we determined the decisions and, and Royal Commission was called and things like that. that that's a kind of implication, I would say, for, from this because, you know, it, it looks more like a committee from, you know, from the book 1984. Yeah, you know, the, the Ministries of Truth. So it's like, how can you dominate truth, right? So, so I think even in one of the Twitter file, they mentioned how even scientific dissent and discussion on COVID management has been censored. But I think, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. We'll talk about that in the second video. Yep. But that's one of the things that we have talked so much, I think, in season three, right? So much about COVID, lockdown and things like that. Now, what are the th interesting things that you have found from this Twitter file? No, I think it's interesting that you thought they will have just stopped because they have really attained <laughs> their objective in the election, 2020 election. Mm -hmm. And yet they just continue moving on. You thought there's like a red line that was being drawn. And no, yep. and they just continue to push the boundary and test the boundary over and over again. Basically, all these people, they were just, just basically the whole Twitter staffer, mm -hmm. they were in an uproar and they basically just want to push for Trump to yep. be banned altogether from the site. And even though the whole company found no violation in so, yeah. all those things. So, so Trump was removed one year after the election, right? Yep. I mean, not, not immediately. Now, now, maybe you can just quickly run us through how, how did they do that? You know, what, what was the, the mechanism that they, they used yeah, to so, the platform? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's absurd when you look at it. I mean, you have the lower level monitors. They mm -hmm. basically look through all the content. I mean, just for the benefit of all our audience, all our all our tweets are gonna be vetted. Mm -hmm. and they there will be these low level monitors that basically just look through your tweets and see that okay, it doesn't violate the the policy of the company, and then the tweets is off to go. But then they saw that there's nothing wrong, and mm -hmm. then so you have like the lower level people doing this job, and then they report it to the next level. And mind you, only all these higher level people who are in the trust and security team, they mm -hmm. are not low level stuff they are people who have influence like jack dorsey mm -hmm. and some other people who are really really involved in all this thing and you also have like former fbi director in all this platform as well i mean in this committee as well yep. but still they are just saying that we are having a even though they say they are having a hard time to see that this is an incitement and then they still they don't see any incitement angle here and mm -hmm. Then even you have this even this Twitter employee who basically the person was from China. <laughs> yeah. I mean when the person I mean Chinese people have such a we, in the last episode we talk about Chinese people having that sort of harmonious mm -hmm. um, backdrop. They wouldn't be the one that would just go out and challenge. Yep, yep. And yet you have one who say that he is from China and he say that this look a whole lot like a <laughs> census strip. It and does, it does. Yeah, I mean, just looking at all this thing and then you will just be thinking, okay, I mean, if you already have warning from your, your staff, shouldn't you be trusting your staff? And yet they don't, they just continue on and they just decided that because it is against the value, hence they just decide to push for the banning. Did this China staff actually advocated not to ban, right? Yeah, not to ban. Now, it's very interesting that recently, of course, Donald Trump's account has been restored, but he's still not coming back. <laughs> well, but his last tweet, his last tweet say, you know, don't, don't riot, be peaceful. You know, basically people are saying, look at what he say. Basically, it, it justified him not being banned because he was reminding everyone, hey, be careful, don't break the law. If anything, that, that kind of proved that he has done all that he could to prevent 6th January yep. because that, that was the whole basis which all these big tech use against many, many, many people. Now, January 6th, of course, is another totally different topic which we're not getting into or they call it a capital riot, right? Now, of course, now, now we want to talk about what, what's the solution going forward because this kind of censorship it's not new. There's nothing new on earth. But what is new is the technology. 
Right. That, that's why, you know, we always know China, the Great War of China, you know, the Great War of Censorship. It has always been there, but only in recent time, the, the technology is good enough to finally kind of control people. Now, now of course, eventually the, the normal human being might get the technology to overcome. You know, we always say you, you create a limiter, but it can be break, it can be broken. We talk about copyright, we talk about CD, we talk about those kind of things. So, so we haven't come to that stage yet. But the big tech, one of the biggest difference is really the technology. They, they really have the ability to shadow ban you, to kind of cause you not to be seen. And, and you know, so many people are on YouTube, you know, and, and now we're on YouTube. The other day we just checked, right? There is 50 million channel. Yeah. <laughs> and they have all kind of algorithm, algorithm rules. You know, if you behave like this, you'll be seen. If you behave like that, now of course some are commercial decision, but then there's a lot of, Marking, you know, if you're political, if you talk about COVID, remember some of our episodes on Spotify were, were mark yeah. COVID-19 discussion. Please be careful. Please be, you know, don't, don't trust these people. <laughs> I think that's what they're trying to say. But I want to highlight one of the things. Now, very recently, just the last few days, uh, Professor Alan Dershowitz, of course, he's a, a former professor emeritus of Harvard University, a, a, a top criminal and constitution law and of course they ask you know what because the whole thing about censorship it comes down to freedom of expression freedom of speech first amendment but of course we all know first amendment is not unlimited because if you go out and defame people you can be sued so so one of the suggestions not not by the show which but over the years is how do we deal with big tech is they say okay why don't you treat internet as utility because if today I have water, I have electricity, just because you don't like me, you can't just turn off the utility. <laughs> so that's the argument. If we make it utility, you can't just turn off the internet. You can't just deplatform me. You can't, can't just use cancel culture. Now, Dershowitz, of course, he is liberal. He's classical liberal. He is Democrat. But then he is also very sympathetic to the conservative uh, discussion. So he, he said this, you know, he said, he doesn't think internet should be utility because he feels like it will open up a whole floodgate. Suddenly you have all kinds of rubbish on internet. But what he was saying is that we need to be wary of the collusion between private sector and government, which is what is happening with Twitter, with the Twitter files. I'm not quite sure what is Elon Musk's endgame. You know, I, I, you know people, a lot of people are very kind of encouraged by what he did. I, I'm still a bit suspicious of his ultimate uh, goal, but, but that's besides the point. So, but what he released, I, I think he wants to show that, look, the previous management colluded with government and that's why it, it is a wrong behavior. But the show which was basically saying, look, still, I do not think it should be utility. But, but what, what do you think? What, what is the way forward? I mean, okay, before you, you mentioned another argument that I heard would be because it is basically cancel culture. Do you agree? Yep. Totally. And, and they'll be like, look, history has shown us that if, if people want to limit you, then you just have to be more innovative. You just have to be more creative. But today you want to create another Google Play Store. You want to create another Apple App Store. It, it's crazy, right? It is. I, I, th I think it's just so difficult. I mean, if Microsoft couldn't do it, if Nokia couldn't do it, if BlackBerry couldn't do it, do you think any of us have any chance. But anyway, I want to hear your take. Well, I think it's interesting that you're talking about... I, I, honestly, I think what Elon Musk did was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I mean... No, don't he, get me wrong. I, I like he, what he's doing. I, I'm yeah, just I not mean, quite he, sure where it's the end game. He has all the resources. I guess it's just like 1% of his fortune. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it, I yeah, think it's, even a, it's, a model, mm -hmm. it's a model for the conservative. I mean, or freedom fighters. Maybe not use the word conservative, but like freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you truly believe that there is that liberty, I think people need to start to move to towards the paradigm of how can you influence the society? I mean, because, mm. I mean, this whole show is really talking about nation building, yep, yep. talking about transformation. So how do you begin to transform the whole society? I mean, I mean, all this thing is basically that platform that allows public conversation. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do agree that that should be a separate platform altogether but i'm not entirely sure that if you can totally just move out and create a new platform mm. altogether because even if elon musk is wanting to have like a tesla phone right now 
I'm not sure how many people will buy it. Yeah, Amazon tried to do it. Facebook tried to do it and they fail miserably, okay? Very miserably. Not to say that they can't. It's just that it takes a while to create an ecosystem altogether. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if we want to like from one ecosystem to jump into another ecosystem and then you begin to see that there is tyranny that is happening. <laughs> because basically what you're seeing with the big tech colluding with the government is basically, I think, I think the American, especially like Democrats, they are envious of CCP, I think. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Their I think- Their efficiency in controlling people. Yeah, indeed. It's like, mm. it, it's almost like, if you look at what Anthony Fauci is saying, mm. it's, it's almost like he's envious of <laughs> the amount of control that they have. It's like, we just, we just basically censor you. We just basically lock down, continuously lock down. I mean, that's why he's so supportive of lockdown. I mean, even though there's a lot of reports that show lockdown is not effective at all. Mm -hmm. So, but then going back to this, like, the end game, I'm not sure. I think it's just like a model. I mean, probably like rich people, they have that sort of mentality whereby maybe I just want to have that sort of liberty to give people the experience yep. of having to enjoy freedom, basically. I think, I guess, because he comes from Africa and then I guess he, he just wanting to have that, have people experiencing that American dream all together again. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think of him, like, now that you mentioned this, I, I just think, you know, he could be more like, I'm a capitalist, you know, I, I'm yeah. just going to encourage free market. So I don't believe this sort of censorship is good for free market, good for creativity. And just like how we contrast uh, Xi Jinping's era with Deng Xiaoping. Yep. You know, it, there is a huge contrast because for the longest time, people, we're talking about people in China, they, they, they really have no intention of embracing the Western system. Why? Because... They were flourishing, but now suddenly, you know, they are suffering. So there is a contrast for us to see. Do, do join us back again, I think, early January next year, right? All right, so that's it for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.